welcome back to the Crochet Crowdos so my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to work on the flirty tree skirt. This is a really neat idea. It's actually a really simple way to be able to grow uh, a particular tree skirt. It's an easy level and actually there's just a few things that we just need to point out so that you can stay in balance. So we have these scallops in, uh, scallops set up here. Once you get beyond the first scallop everything is in 14 rows. So you do 14 rows scallop, 14 rows scallop and the scallops are actually added as part of the pattern but is actually not part of the structure of the pattern. So they're just floating on top. So that's something that you can look for. So in this particular pattern it says go from rows number one all the way to four and it says continue as established until there's 245 half double crochets. So for me that's a problem because I wanna verify the steps along the way. So I've come up with a solution that you can download from the crochetcrowd.com. I have a little worksheet. Let me show you that next. So usually when they have stuff like that I end up writing on the pattern and then I figure out what it is and then I do all the math and all that jazz. So what I decided to do, ta-da, we have a little crochet worksheet that you can just check off on your own. You can download this from my website if you wish. Let me explain how it works and so let's take a look at the worksheet here. And so we have four columns. So this is the red, the light blue, the white, and also teal. So it's separated by colors but it's also separated that the last section here is a scallop. Now the scallop for each one of these bottoms are slightly different from each other so it's not the same pattern as you're going. So in today's tutorial if you're going along just read the instructions for these that you will have and after the set of repeat and I'll show you that on the pattern as well. So what I thought to my point of view is that what if I wanted to change the pattern to have more scallops to it. What is the multiple? So this here the bottom of this column is actually on the first page and this is after the first row. So right here is the set of instruction. So I realized that the multiple for that is 10 plus 5. So if I could figure out what that was then I realized that every time I had that same multiple like 205, 165, 125, those are the rows that I can add more scallops to if I would like to. Now they don't, this instruction here does not apply to these three because it's different. But what I'm saying to you is that if you want to apply scallops in more of a uniform way without having to learn new ways to do the scallops, that's an easy way to do it. And it's also every fifth row if you want to look at it from that perspective as well. So what we have to do is that we have to look at the sheet from a unique point of view on what the columns actually mean. So looking at this we see that we have the row counts you know one through whatever and then we have the stitch count. So the stitch count start is, starts in row number one is 61. It increases by eight as you're going out through the whole thing. Now the multiple is what it's growing out to be. So you'll notice that it's a round circle kind of concept. There is a consistent growth to that. Now starting in row number two you're going to notice is that we have a multiple of six, then seven, eight and etc. But starting in row number two the very first part of the row when you're going to start is this number minus one. So it's actually five. This is actually six. This is actually seven. This is actually eight. You see what I'm saying? But then once you get that beginning of the row started the rest of the multiple is this. The last five stitches of each one of these rows is always just five stitches on its own. So that's something that you can look at. So let's go and look at the instruction and let's see what we're talking about. So as I stated we have the multiple. So in number two it says in each of the six. So the six is the multiple. So we're going to keep going in this. So half, one half double crochet in each of the next six, two half double crochets, crochets in the next. But you will notice at the very beginning of this instruction the chain two that counts as a stitch. So it's one half double crochet in each of the next five. So this number here is one is this minus one. So it gives you five. The next time that you will have this in the next row it's seven as your multiple instead of six and when you start it's six here. So this minus one gives you six and you're going to notice that is consistent throughout the whole thing. So when you're looking at my worksheet that I have for you is that whatever the multiple is the very first start before the repeating of the pattern is always this number minus one and hopefully that makes sense for you today. So we're going to get ourselves started. You can half double crochet, you can double crochet if you would like to. It's up to you and today we're going to get started on our journey. One last thing I'm going to leave you. So this is the front scallop area and then this is what you have to do after that scallop is done. So the scallop is using the front loops only and then you're going to start the next color on the back loops of the same row. So this is just actually adding to it. So this is actually technically the next 
uh, uh, row in order to start. So you're going to do that and it says complete this until there's 357 half double crochets. My worksheet will help you out with that. Then the next row you end up with your front loops only. It's a slightly different configuration so just read this instruction and then follow it. And then you're back on joining it again and starting with uh, with your half double crochets again to 469 half double crochets. Then you're doing your front loops again. These are the scallops. You're continuing and then you're going to finish off with some scallops. So for the scallop work beyond the first one row number this one here I'm going to have you look at this pattern and just try to work it out within yourselves. I've also given you the keys to the kingdom so that you can add more scallops if you want to change the colors more often or just want to have some more fun. So let's uh, begin our pattern and let's grab your crochet hook. It's recommending Karen Simply Soft today and it's a five millimeter hook. I am going to be using Bernat Super Value today with a five and a half millimeter size eye. So creating a slip knot we want to chain a total of 54. You can do double crochets or half double crochets. It's completely up to you uh, what you would like to do. But half double crochets will be tighter. You'll probably see more of a circle happening where the um, double crochets will probably be looser and probably not as defined until later on in the project. So chain 54 now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go all the way to 54. Meet me back here in just a moment. If you would like to do double crochets you're still going to start at the same spot and you're still going to honor the same stitch counts. If you'd like to do half double crochet which I will demonstrate here today um, we will um, you can just honor those same stitch counts so it doesn't really matter. The difference it will be how fast it will grow. Going third chain from the hook uh, we want to double or sorry half double crochet third chain from the hook. So that chain that we just skipped over is counted as a stitch. So this one and this one. So now you technically have two. So this one uh, that we just did. Um, so we have uh, one half double crochet in the third. So we're now we're going, going to half double crochet the next three in a row. So one, two, and three. And then the next one has two into the same one. So two half double crochets there. So here's the repeat pattern instruction. There will be five half double crochets in a row and then the next one has two into the same one. So five and two and then eventually you'll get to the other side and the last five stitches on the end of this chain will be half double crochets if your counts are correct. And I'll see you there in just a moment. So go five and then two. As you get all the way to the other side the last five in a row are a half double crochet. You should know that the end of each one of the rows the last five are always a half double crochet. So it works out beautifully as you go. So I noticed that I did a practice sample and double crochet with this. I noticed that it does a nicer bend when you do the half double crochet. So you want to verify that you have 61 stitches. Include that little chain one that I or that chain uh, that we skipped over. Include that as a stitch and make sure you have 61. If you don't just add an extra stitch and if you have too many just uh, take out one stitch and just undo the last knot there and you can get yourself back in balance. So I'm gonna verify that and then move on to row number two. So let's move on to row number two. I do have 61. And I didn't have to do anything. That's awesome. So I'm going to chain two which will count as my first stitch. Now row number two we're going to do the first five in a row starting in the very next one as a half double crochet. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, and five. Now the repeat on this row is actually technically six. So remember what I explained to you is that the multiple was actually six. We have to minus one which gives you the number five and that's also written in this instruction but later on when you're just having to build it out you will want to know that. So once you have your first five in then it will be two half double crochets into the next one and now the official repeat starts. So it will be six and then two and six and two and if your counts are right the very last five will be half double crochets. So please move forward now and do six and two, six and two and I'll be back in just a moment at the end of this row. So I've just put two into there. I'm keeping the counts and now the last five. That little nubbly little thing there that is actually a stitch so don't forget that. So the last five will always be a half double crochet on their own. So going right into the end most people will stop right here and that's not the right place to stop. You wanna stop right in that turning chain. So go right into the turning chain itself. Don't go into a space to separate it out and just half double crochet. So that was the end of row number two. 
we're going to turn our work and move on to row number three. And so the growth is actually similar. The difference is, is that the multiples will change. So check things off as you go on my sheet if you would like to. So row number three, the multiple is seven, but the starting, as we start the row, it will be six. So if you wanna write the number six for yourself, it's easier. And then you're gonna do that all the way through to the end. And so it will be that to get started. So let's start row number three. And row number four, I'm gonna take you through that one. And row number four, look at it. It actually has the multiple that we need in order to have scallops. And this is where I'm gonna demonstrate the scallops for you on how it's done. So let's start row number three. We're going to chain two to start and the multiple is technically seven. So seven minus one gives you six. So starting in the very next stitch, the next six in a row will each be a half double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now you're going to put two into the same one. So two into this one and now we're going to officially start that repeat. So it's seven and two, seven and two and then the last five are half double crochets. Please do this all the way across for row number three. So I'm coming up to the end of the row and the last five. So the two was in there and the last five are half double crochets. So we know that our stitching is staying in balance because that can actually work. And don't forget that turning little nubbly thing. Mm -hmm technical language today. So that was the end of row number three. So you're gonna turn your row and or turn your uh, project and now you're going to go into row number four. So row number four the multiple is eight as we see on the worksheet. You're gonna just chain two. So if the multiple is eight, eight minus one gives you seven. So starting in the next one will be seven half double crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then two will go into the next one. And so now the official eight multiple begins. So it'll be eight and two, eight and two, and the last five will be half double crochets. When we get to the end of this row, I'm going to show you how to do the scalloping next. So I'm now coming to the end of number four. So the last five are just half double crochets. No magic, it's just counting in order to make that work. There's the top of that one and don't forget that turning little nebbly thing or that turning chain. So now we're going to start and I'm gonna show you the scalloping. So let's talk about the repeat of the pattern because I'm gonna be leaving you shortly because the rest of this is just a matter of just following it along and you'll see that it will continually grow out just like you see it. So let's take a look at the repeating. So I've now just finished number four. So number four you can see that it's been highlighted so I can actually apply the scalloping which is the same instruction that is technically when the scallop first appears in this. So when you're looking at the photograph here, this round here is technically right here. It's way down here so you have a lot to go before you get there. Then it's every 14 from that particular point. So what I'm going to leave for you now is that this is the multiple to get there so, and what I'm about to show you is this scallop. The other three you're going to have to just read the instruction and figure that out on your own. It's actually not that hard. Just take it bit by bit and once you understand the repeat pattern it's actually not too difficult. And when I go to look at it the repeating as you see right here the, the difference is, is how it's starting and then how it's finishing. But everything else in, in between is pretty consistent. So you're skipping four, you're putting ten trebles in the next and then skipping uh, four and then a slip stitch, skip four, ten trebles and this is how I figured out. So let's begin and let's show you the scalloping. So to do the scalloping right where we're sitting we need to start and it says uh, working in the front loops only. So that's okay. So if you're new to crochet, I'm not sure you'd be doing this project but if you were, you're going to use the loop that's closest to you. Both loops equals a stitch and the loop away from you is the back loop which we will use next time. Okay, the next row after this. So it tells you to put in a slip stitch in each of the next two half double crochets. So next meaning the next two. So just slip on over in the front loop only to move over. And now we're gonna officially start our scalloping from this particular point. So to do this we're going to skip the next four. So one, two, three, four and in the front loop only you wanna apply ten treble crochets. So you're gonna wrap that hook twice and we'll just count out ten. So we're just gonna say one and then two, 
three and four five six seven eight nine and ten. Now you're going to skip the next four. So one, two, three, four. Slip stitch into the next one after that and then repeat what I just showed you. So you're going to skip four, one, two, three, four and in the fifth one you wanna apply ten trebles and you're gonna do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. I'll get this done and then I'll show you how to move on. So this technically in the instructions doesn't count as a real row because what we're going to use is this particular row below in order to continue to go so that this will just float on top. I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm getting close to the end of the round. So one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna skip over the four and I'm just gonna slip stitch in the remaining that are left including that little nubbly thing. Don't forget about that. That's gonna be the trick where people screw up on. So we technically have to fasten off. Even if you're not changing color you still must fasten off because you're start, you have to get on the other side before you begin the next one. So this technically in the instructions for me is not actually a row. It's just more of a builder on top and then we're going to start the next row right back where we were and build it up underneath as if this doesn't exist. So this is a nice thing to add. So you can add any colors that you would like to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to red. I'm just gonna demonstrate one more time on to get started and we'll begin that journey next. I know eh? This worksheet's never gonna go away. <laughs> so I just applied a scallop here. I could do it because I had that and my stitch counting is correct. So now I'm just gonna pick up on number five, the, mul uh, the row number five. It's starting here. So it's the multiple of nine. So to start the very first section of the row, it's nine minus one gives you eight. So remember that as you're going to begin. So you're gonna continue. So anytime you add a scallop, you must finish off and then start back at this uh, where you started the scallop right at the very beginning in order to stay in balance. Let's begin number five and let's add a new color. So we're going to begin and we need to start on the beginning one here. So remember we slip stitched over. So the slip stitching over appears like that's the last stitch but it's technically not. It's over here. It's just bend it over so you can see it. So you wanna access the back loops that are behind the scallops for this particular round or particular row. So just a chain one, two, uh, sorry just a slip stitch and then chain two. So there is your first half double crochet. So in this case we want to go uh, the next eight in a row. So just folding it in front. So just starting in the next one in the back loop only and you're gonna put eight half double crochets in a row. Now it's not hard. It's just a matter of getting the right angle so that you can start your journey. So we have one and then once you get the first back loop you can just keep it kind of uh, bent over. So you're gonna go two and then three and you can kind of pinch that in front so it stays down. This is four, five, six, seven and eight. Noticing that I went up over top of the straggler too. So if that's eight, the next one has to be two into the same one. So we will do that. And then the multiple uh, uh, exists now. So it's gonna be nine and then two, nine and two. And whatever you do, even if you're off by one, make sure that you get five right into the la very last section of this and then we'll carry on. So maybe just getting past these scallops may be a little bit harder for you but if you can just kind of fake it or make it at this point, it would actually be in your best interest. So remember it's nine and two. I'll be back in just a moment. So I come up to the end of number five and I wanna make sure that I have five half double crochets beyond the two that are sharing. So you can turn your work and then move on to row number six. So this is where I'm going to leave you today but I am going to demonstrate on how to weave in your ends. So let's just uh, quickly review that. So if you have that issue which you will if you're changing colors or even the beginning or ending. You just wanna throw it through a tapestry needle. Chances are you will use the skirt year after year. So just slam it through some stitch work right in the stitches itself. So go once and when you pull on it don't pull and change the shapes. Just make sure it's, it's taut 
and go back in the other direction a second time and then finally in the third direction there. So now you can just pick up and continue along your journey if you would like to. Actually almost every f five rows you can actually add a scallop. So we already have one done and then these scallops just lay back down on top of the project. So it actually may look pretty cool if you add more scalloping a lot sooner and this is what it could look like and this is something that may be up your alley. So that's it for today. This is a tutorial on how to do the Christmas skirt and on behalf of my friends at yarnspirations.com we hope you have a good one and we'll hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.